Hi, this is Kanababu. In this video, I am explaining about WCF, Windows Communication Foundation. Before going to WCF, first of all, you must know about some basics like what is homogeneous application and what is heterogeneous application. So, homogeneous application means creating the communication between different applications that was developed in same languages or same technologies. The type of applications are called as homogeneous application. For example, here if you consider, I have one application that is application 1 and here I developed one more application that is application 2. Application 1 is developed by using what? ASP.NET and application 2 is also developed by using .NET. Is it clear? Application 1 is developed by using ASP.NET and application 2 by using ASP.NET. Now I want to create the communication between these two applications which was developed in same languages or same technologies. That type of applications are called as homogeneous applications. Or for example, application 1 is developed by using Java, application 2 is developed by using Java. Now the communication between different applications that were developed in what? Same languages or same technologies is called as homogeneous application. Next what is heterogeneous application? Creating the communication between different applications that were developed in different languages or different technologies is called as heterogeneous application. For example, here let us assume that I have an application, application 1 and here I have application 2. Application 1 is developed by using Java and application 2 is developed by using .NET. Let us assume ASP.NET. Let us assume that here application 1 is, for example, if you consider any website, something like uh, some bookmyshow.com. Bookmyshow.com is application 1. And here let us consider something like AxisBank.com. AxisBank.com is application 2. Generally, whenever you consider any web application, every web application, the main purpose of web application is to do better business. Where we can do more business, where the number of users are more. That is via internet. For example, if you consider what any web application like Facebook, Gmail, uh, IRCTC, Flipkart, uh, eBay.com, Amazon.com, bookmyshow.com every website main target is to do business business means where the money transfer is there so where, where when can we do more business uh, we can do the business means for example if you want to book the ticket in ircdc or bookmyshow.com or amazon.com or if you want to buy any item in amazon.com or flipkart.com then definitely we must have the banking account like something like uh, um, some debit card or credit card we can purchase the amount now in that case, if you consider here, for example, if bookmyshow.com is developed in Java and accessbank.com is developed in .NET. Now these two applications must interact with what? each other. This type of applications are called as heterogeneous applications. Creating the communication between different applications that was developed in different languages or different technologies. That type of applications are called as heterogeneous applications. For example, the application 1 is developed by using Java, application 2 is developed by using .NET. Now these two must interact with each other. But the problem here is what Java program can understand by whom? JVM. And uh, .NET program can understand by whom? CLR. JVM can understand which code? Byte code. CLR can understand which code? MSIL code. JVM means Java Virtual Machine, which will take care about memory management, compilation, debugging, everything. CLR means common language runtime, which will take care about memory management, compilation, debugging, everything. So, CLR is responsible to execute the .NET program and JVM is responsible to execute the Java program. Whenever you develop an application in Java, and this Java program will convert into bytecode, and this bytecode can understand to JVM. And uh, this bytecode will send to what application to where CLR cannot able to understand this bytecode. Similarly, the code that was sent here, that is MSIL code, cannot understandable by JVM. So, if two applications must interact with each other, there must be a common language that can understand by both the applications. But here the problem is, JVM cannot understand MSIL code, CLR cannot understand the bytecode. Now, here the actual uh, requirement will come. So, what is the requirement means? There must be a common language that can understandable by any operating system, any database, any language, any technology. 
anyone can understand a common language that is nothing but XML. So XML will play the major role. What is XML? XML is a universal markup language, extensible markup language. It is a, a, why it is called as a universal markup language means XML can understandable by any operating system, any database, any language, any technology. Anyone can understand XML. Now, XML is main uh, aim of XML is to transfer the data. So, here yeah, XML is just used to describe the data. Is it clear? Now, what we will do here, application 1 will generate bytecode. This bytecode is converted into what? XML. And this XML was given to what? Send via network to application 2. In application 2, CLR can understand what? XML. And again, CLR will convert that XML into MSI record and it will process. JVM, CLR both can understand what? XML. So here, in order to learn WCF for web services, definitely you must have the knowledge on what? XML. If you don't know XML, you just go to youtube.com and type XML by Kannababu. And you can watch all the videos. There I already mentioned nearly six videos are there. So you can uh, prepare all the six videos. You'll get some more clarity on what? XML. So now let us see about what is service oriented architecture, SOA. Service oriented architecture is a style of computer software where services are provided to the other components by application components through a communication protocol over a network. So in simple words I can tell something like SOA is an approach that was followed by W3C to develop what? Distributed application. So what is W3C? W3C means World Wide Web Consortium. It is an international community where member organizations have full-time staff, the public work together to develop their standards. Actually, W3C is an organization that was established by some group of companies where these organizations, what they will do, they will take the, they will follow the standards that was, they will maintain the standards for the development of what web. So actually, XML, HTML, uh, JavaScript, these all are the technologies which were developed by following the standards that was given by whom? W3C. Here let us see what is the need of service oriented architecture. For example, if you consider something like Amazon.com. Amazon.com is a site where the customers can log into this website and they can purchase the items via online. That is a shopping cart application. So here Amazon.com is a website. Now a lot of customers will try to log into Amazon.com and they can try to purchase items. In order to purchase items, definitely the customers must have the banking account. So definitely, let us assume that Amazon.com is developed by using Java. Now this website must interact with what? Uh, different banking websites. For example, if you consider something like Bank of America, you can consider or something like uh, uh, ICICI or you can consider Axis Bank or you can consider uh, SBI State Bank of India or you can consider some HDFC like lot of banks are there. So this uh, website cannot they can they cannot restrict that only specific bank customers can what uh, purchase items in the Amazon.com any customer can purchase item. So definitely this banking website this Amazon.com must have the link with what uh, these banking websites. For example, and these banking applications are developed in different technologies. For example, if it is developed in Java, that is Bank of America is developed in Java, ICICI is developed in Java, Axis Bank is developed in .NET, and SBI is in .NET, HDFC is in some other technologies. These all different web applications are there. These all web applications are developed in different languages or different technologies. Now they must interact with each other. The main aim of service oriented architecture is different applications must interact with what? Each other. Different applications that were developed in different technologies can interact with each other. Based on this concept, W3C has invented what? SOA, service oriented architecture. It is an approach which is used to develop what? Distributed applications, creating the communication between different applications that were developed in different technologies or different languages. Here, actually, the what SYAKM, your web services, WCF, this all comes under what? Service oriented architecture, SYA. Now actually what these people will do, these bank people will create what? Some services and they will give the services to Amazon.com. Not only Amazon.com, anyone can what? 
buy the service, anyone can want to consume the service. Is it clear? That is the approach that was given by SOA. Is it clear? But in order to create the communication between these are the part the, the application which is giving the service is called as service provider. Service provider. And here the application who is trying to consume the service is called as service consumer. Service consumer. Here the service consumer is Amazon.com, service provider is for example accessbank.com. So here accessbank.com will create one service. And that service should be consumed by Amazon.com. Like that Amazon.com must buy the service from what? All the bankings. Then only the customers can what? Uh, purchase the items. Otherwise they can just use items by login with Amazon.com because Amazon is not having their own banks. Definitely they must have tie up with what? Other banks. So in this scenario based on this concept only the SOA was designed. So here before learning WCF first of all you need to learn what? XML. So just you go to youtube.com and type my name Kannababu then automatically here you can watch what? Playlist. And here you can watch XML. Here under XML I explained about what is XML, part 1, part 2, what is serialization, what is binary serialization, soap serialization, XML serialization. These all are the basics that you must have the clarity before learning what? WCF. Right? In the next video I will explain about the architecture of SOA. For more videos you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and Facebook group. Thank you. Have a nice day.